Hello there, Exiles. Halo and Seek here, and welcome to our Orobot guide for Path of Exile Lake of Calandra League. Orobots are characters that forego traditional gameplay and instead draw their strength from the power of friendship. You may not be able to kill monsters, but you can make some numbers really, really big, and isn't that what Path of Exile is all about? The Orobot playstyle is similar to that of a minion build, but instead of your minions following you around, you have to follow a singular, incredibly powerful, often boneheaded minion wherever it goes. Boneheaded pretty often. More often than not sometimes. <laughs> Before we get into the guide, there's a few things to talk about. The first thing is that a lot of the Orobot guides out there, while some of them have very good versions of Orobots, they're basically all completely lacking in information on how to take an Orobot from level 1 all the way through maps at every stage of investment. So for leveling, we have in the notes section, Seek has laid out an excellent source of information here that covers all of the gym sockets you need, so all sorts of things to think about, um, it goes through like lots of, I mean, you can probably tell, talk about it more than I can. Uh, like yeah, all these considerations, I mean the... the great Orobot swap, like when we generally switch from the Orobot being a solo character to picking up Boras, you know. Yep, it's got that. The uh, The notes should take you all the way through the axe, and then it has a little bit of extra information at the, bo at the bottom about um, progressing your gear and items into uh, into maps and into the more expensive versions. Uh, along with that, like with the Spark Carry Guide, if you've seen that, there are also detailed leveling trees. So, you know, from level 24 all the way on to early maps, several different stages of investment, uh, and accompanying item sets that show what items you should prioritize and what gym sockets you should have at those level breakpoints. So this should make your leveling experience very easy. Now we wanted to do a super well edited guide that was tightly organized and such, uh, but it's like 3 in the morning on Sunday or Monday morning here, and League Start is fast approaching, so you're getting more of a podcast style guide. Uh, hopefully it still covers, it'll still cover everything you want to know. It'll be a, just a little bit uh, more of a windy journey to get there, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, so you know, why don't you tell us about what an Orobot provides? Alright, so the Orobot provides... Uh, first and foremost, absolutely absurd defenses. Gives you maximum Eli res from the purities. You get a ton of armor and evasion from the combination of determination, grace, defiance banner. Uh, you get a bunch of life and mana regen from vitality and clarity. Uh, this version employs storm employs the stormblast mines to uh, that scale off aura effect when those are thrown on the ground. Enemies nearby enemies will take a hundred and eight percent increased damage. Right, because you addition, have, uh, I was going to say, because you have 18 mines, right? You can throw 18 down, and each, that, right. like, that scales up to 6% each. Yes. Uh, before yeah. we cover anything else, let's just talk about high impact mine portal mines, because I know people are going to ask in comments about it. Uh, we run the Annihilating Light on a lot of the versions of the carry, so um, high impact portal mines do nothing because we're already doing triple damage. Uh, in addition to that, while they should have the same cast time, Seek swears that Stormblast Mine throws a little faster, or that there's like some weird delay with high impact mine. You know, since the damage it, it, is pretty close, it sure anyways. does. <laughs> Honestly, if you haven't played with uh, Stormblast Mines for hundreds of hours, you probably wouldn't even notice it. But personally, I I can't stand that slight delay. Uh, well, it yeah. definitely exists. I I promise. Uh, that and because of all the different things we run, we're also very very strapped for gym sockets because we like having a cast of damage taken molten shell, fitting in a rejuvenation totem, um, additional accuracy on smite. We we're going to talk about that later, but we might as well bring it up now. Uh, where is it? Or is it? Uh, smite in this. It's gonna be in the flame dash. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So additional accuracy. It makes your smite hit and you know go from like seventy or eighty percent all the way up to you know ninety eight. So it hits reliably every time. And you can you know quality this to get yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you uncheck increased. that right now, it goes down to seventy. Yeah, that's uh. That's if if you're familiar with playing an Orbot, you know that that is not going to feel good. Right, because it's like twenty percent chance that your big damage buff, you know, isn't up. Right, so you want the consistency. Okay, so now that we've uh, thrown exactly. the order of things we're going to talk about completely out of whack, <laughs> let's go back and finish what the Orbot provides us. Yeah, we were talking and about speaking defenses. of the big damage buff, that being the level thirty smite granted by our uh, unique scepter, the sign of the sin eater gives a level 30 smite which is equivalent to over 600 flat added lightning damage yeah that's like 
three level 20 added lightning support gems. This is absolutely crazy. Like going from level 20 on your smite to level 30 is ludicrous. Right, and then uh, finally, we also run, the Orobot also runs the best link, Soul Link. She gives the carry around 66% more effective hit points. The 14%, so first, the linked target takes 14% less damage, and that applies to the Righteous Fire degen. Uh, you know, it's usually not the difference maker, because you don't want to run Righteous Fire if you don't have a fair amount of energy shield, but or energy shield regen, um, but it's enough that it's a really nice stat. And then 30% of the damage that they take from hits only after that is taken from the Orobot's energy shield instead of the carry. You know, the Orobot has a really easy time capping spell suppress, unlike these versions of the build, so it uh, it helps a lot when doing like scary boss fights and such. And in general, the carry has a much more dangerous playstyle because the Orobot can stay back. The carry generally has to like run up and face check things a little bit more. Um, yeah, exactly. Even with um, Soul Link damaging, uh, transferring some of the damage from the carry to the Orobot, uh, even with that, oftentimes the Orobot is still going to feel like the tankier and the safer of the pair. Uh, but again, after, with the defenses it provides, they're both going to be insanely tanky. Alright, and uh, let's talk about our damage roars a little bit. So, uh, yeah. this is obviously going to change drastically based on investment tree, right? Because we get more and more reservation to fit more and more damage auras. Exactly. It spikes pretty hard. Early mapping, you're going to be running one damage aura even through late maps. Um, when you finally get your uh, Victario set up, you know, around 500x, you can run... Uh, two damage auras, and potentially one on a Divine Blessing. And then when you throw a little bit more currency in there, around, and I, I say X because that's how we organized it last time, we tried uh, to... but with the crazy economy changes with the Divine Orbs, um, we've recently changed it into chaos. Uh, what we think is the equivalent amount of chaos it's, it's going to cost. Who knows what this is actually going to be? Like, we've, we've tried to estimate it, like like you said, but what can you do? Anyways, what can you do? In yeah. this version, we actually fit Wrath, Hel Wrath, Zealotry, Hatred, and Haste with all the defensive auras still. That's sort of the higher kind of investment point. Um, to fit in these additional uh, 50 percent, right? The damage auras are all 50 percent. It's pretty hefty cost to run. To fit them all in, uh, in the higher investment version, you're going to need to invest in a couple of level three Enlightens, uh, two of them, I believe. And in addition, you're going to need slightly more expensive aura gear. All right. Uh, what's the playstyle of an aura bot like? You know, obviously like that of a minion build, but, you know, tell us, tell us a little more about it. <laughs> to be a little more specific, um, now, generally speaking, any aura bot is going to do, you know, one very important thing, which is follow around the carry or the party, um, potentially, and simply passively, you know, grant them all the, the all the insane buffs that the Orobot grants. Um, however, uh, there are a lot of incredibly useful utility gems. Again, think the uh, Soul Link, the Smite, the Stormblast Mines. Uh, we fit those all into this build, and so this Orobot ends up uh, being a pretty active playstyle. It's definitely not just a run around and do nothing. Um, you know, just follow the carry build, you're going to have to be going in and out of combat, and you're going to have to be paying attention to all of your buttons, of which we have several. Yeah, it's it's a lot more like playing a support build in an MMO, I'd imagine, um, where you have, like, lots of buttons to manage, it's a lot more intensive. Now, at higher investment, we start aggressively turning off buttons <laughs> in both the carry and the aura bot, uh, to the point where our goal for the League is we are going to kill a 300 quant feared while completely AFK, using nothing but a one-link Tempest Shield for damage. And uh, we'll talk about those. You know, we're going to make Aegis Aurora melding versions. Those don't exist yet, but uh, we'll add them to the POB, you know, a day or two before League start. <laughs> we were supposed to talk about that later, but I was just too excited. Yeah. Hey, tr truly the Path of Exile dream, right? You just, you want to remove as many buttons as possible. It, like, it's it's fun to have them, in a sense. Like, you know, you're, it's a little more active, but it's like, I want to earn the right to trivialize the game while pushing no buttons, you know, it's like... Exactly. <laughs> well, let's get into the fundamental mechanics of an Aurobot. We've, we've talked about some of the high-level things, um, but if you're not familiar with how Aurobots work, you know, we spend auras, we, we, we run a lot of auras, which means we need to reserve a lot of life and mana. Oh, uh, right, so... You know, typically most of your auras are going to be reserved on your mana, um, the reason we can fit more on our mana than on our life is that there are so many tools in the game 
um, that give mana reservation efficiency and otherwise lessen the cost of you know reserving auras on your mana. Um, for instance, there are Helm Enchants, although this build doesn't need any specific ones. Uh, and there are notably a bunch of masteries around the tree that even give mana reservation to specific auras. Um, because they give them to specific auras, it means that you can't. You have to be a little bit careful um, between which which auras you're going to reserve on your life and your mana. Um, for instance, you any any aura that you take a mastery for, you're going to want to be reserved on your mana, of course. And generally speaking, to reserve as many auras as possible. Um, you want to finagle your mana and life reservation so that you're reserving as much as possible out of both of those pools. Yeah, um, we'll we'll talk. We're going to talk about it later, but it's a good time to bring in to bring it up now. Um, Chaos inoculation aura bots versus running coruscating elixir. Uh, people ask about this a lot because a lot of people just don't want to reserve auras in their life because it's kind of scary, right? And especially if you're not familiar with how it works. Um, but coruscating elixir is really easy to maintain uptime on, right? We do that with um, Pathfinder. Yeah, so um, you don't even need... Uh, you don't exactly need 100% uptime even. Uh, you can run around with 75 or even 50% uptime, but we only need three small pieces of gear um, or investments to get 100%, you know, standing still in hideout uptime on Coruscating Elixir. Those things are going to be the Pathfinder Ascendancy, the survival secrets unique jewel which is the same one that we pick up in act two and run throughout the rest of the game and then just uh four passive points spent on the essence extraction wheel yeah and so you, you do actually get 100 percent uptime and that should work even in reduced flash charges gained maps so you you are 100 uh, percent comfortable uh, once you're once you're confident with how the build works then you can start to remove some of those things um, like we, we, in some versions for farming feared and such, we don't even run the Pathfinder node. We just take it off and run like a necro for cast speed, just because we are very comfortable in those fights with knowing exactly how much flask charge sustained we really need, you know, just the, uh, mastery alone and killing things tends to work there. Exactly. Yeah. So to, to return real quick to the chaos inoculation versus, uh, versus essentially coruscating elixir, right? Reserving on your life. I, I previously I would have referred to that as a covenant version, but alas, this is a buff. GG deleted that item. Oh, oh sorry, man. they they buffed it. They buffed it. My bad. Yeah, one of the but, unique uh, reworks make them more interesting and exciting. Oh, but they sure made my weekend a <laughs> lot more exciting as I had to redo about twenty hours of this. I love to see it. I'm gonna get anyway. a "This is a Buff" T-shirt in uh, <laughs> in commemoration. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, the especially on a, a very high level of investment, um, and I mean very high, well over 100 exalts, uh, you can go Chaos Inoculation because you have the luxury of being able to afford a bunch of three passive voices with 35% increased effect uh, reservation clusters, and, you know, I mean, cur currency solves every problem in this game. You throw a bunch of Enlightens on it, you throw some voices, and you can run every aura um, without reserving any life. Uh, but really, as we mentioned earlier, the price of running Coruscating Elixir really isn't that big, uh, given the huge upside of simply being able to run, like, you know, another 120 or 140% reservation worth of auras. So yeah, like everything in Path of Exile, you can throw currency at a problem and just make it go away. Uh, but all of these versions of both this build and the carry have been designed and optimized to insane levels for cost efficiency. Like I'm, we're, we're <laughs> it's so crazy that every now and then we're like sitting here getting ready to record and we're just going back and forth talking about how good the builds are and how, how crazy everything is just because they, they've turned out so well. And we're like pat ourselves on the back a little bit. All right. So since Covenant is dead and deleted and gone forever, uh, we use Victarios, right? Yeah. Um. It is, you know, it... <laughs> doesn't feel nearly as good i i do miss my old covenant but victarios has you know uh some pretty powerful modifiers on it namely it has uh two two modifiers the two most important ones are the 45 percent increased reservation efficiency of socketic gems that means that when we put a bunch of uh 50 damage auras in there we get a huge uh benefit a huge boost to our reservation 
And notably, socketed gems are supported by level 30 generosity. Now what generosity support does is it provides a huge amount of uh, aura effect to the, the supported auras. A level 30 generosity in Victarios gives 49% increased aura effect. However, the downside of generosity support, as the name might imply, is that your your auras, uh, the supported auras, no longer apply to you. Because of this, you have to be really careful about which gems you support, or which auras you support with your generosity, and therefore which ones you socket in uh, Victario's influence. But, um, pretty much, you never, under any circumstances, want to put any of your defensive auras linked to a generosity, um, or even... You even want to avoid uh, putting anything like Clarity on there, as we need Clarity to sustain Soul Link for ourselves. Essentially, uh, the only things linked to our Generosity are going to be our level 30 Smite, which uh, since Sign of the Sin Eater grants level 30 Smite, anything you socket in Sign of the Sin Eater that can support a Smite will support the level 30 Smite granted by it. And All then right. well, the, we get level 20 yeah. Generosity on our Smite, right? Um, yes. But you're talking about just generosity in general, maybe. Yeah, generosity in general. And then, then the other inbuilt generosity is, of course, on right, uh, right. Victoria's influence. Uh, and the 15% uh, aura effect on it is pretty nice, too, I guess. It is a little bit of a saving grace. You know, that is <laughs> that is something that Covenant did not provide. Uh, but we do really need to reserve auras on our life. And since we can't do it with Covenant anymore, we use Prism Guardian. That's right. In addition... Uh, now, we would have had to use this anyway to make up for the reservation lost by Covenant. But, you know, in addition, uh, another nice, fun, buffed, and made more interesting unique, although it was actually a faded version, uh, was the Wakatutuki Omatua. That used to be one of the favorite shields of the Aurabot. It ran around 200 energy shield with 20% increased aura effect. Now, uh, it has been reduced to the non-faded version, Matua Tapuna which is the same thing with a pathetic amount of energy shield instead. It's like one of the yes. 14 one of the 14 nerfs we've like received. It's somewhere in there. It's like 10. It's like it's at crazy. least 10, you know, since yeah. the in the manifesto and patch notes, it's pretty crazy. And the funny thing is, we don't even care cuz we're just that strong and it doesn't matter. It's just like, yeah, you're going to throw a, exactly. put a couple hundred chaos at it, you know, so we're still still just do all the do content in the game pretty much. Exactly. As I like to say, we we were just overcapped on being broken before the nerfs, you know. So we, we, we were protected. <laughs> we're still we're still like just about the maximum amount of broken you can be. All right. Um, well, I love how we've gotten a little bit out of order with the Aurobot, but let's just keep going on. We've talked about Smite, right? 600 flat added lightning. It's pretty nuts. Um, what's up next on the list? Of uh, all discipline, probably, right? Before we get into the Divine Blessings setup? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, so Vol Discipline... Uh, I mean, what it does, it makes your energy shield recharge not be interrupted by damage. Um, so, you know, when you, you wait a while, right, your energy shield starts to recharge, and it recharges fast, right? I believe on this character, we're looking at around 5,000 per second while the Vol Discipline is up. It also, of course, applies to your allies as well. Um, and you can think of this as an... Oh, is that only three point two? It's only three point three. It's one of the nerves. Oh, one of the nerves how, have hit how really sad! Well. I only, only recover thirty two hundred uh, es per second. But yeah. Oh that, wait, wait, wait! Huge, um, Look, it's thirty two hundred and ninety nine. Oh, no. You know the advertising thing where people like price things ninety nine cents. <laughs> so you round down in your head, thinking it's cheaper. You, people, you, you, you ever wonder if that works? You've just seen it here. <laughs> I'm gonna interrupt. I just, I just had to interject that. Was... No, of course, of course. It's a great observation there. Uh, okay, Divine Blessing but, uh, Tech. Uh, unless you had something else you're going to get into first. Uh, no, I mean, I, it, it's an immortal button. Yeah, that's what it is, and that's that's the reason that we, in uh, later versions of the build, don't run any other Vol Auras, because while well, they're powerful and they're fun, they do take away souls from your Vol Discipline, you know, but souls gained are shared between all your Vol skills, and while the other ones are good, they don't really compare to an immortality button. Uh, uh, I, I will say, from all of the feared f sets we've done, uh, especially Uber Elder, Seek seems to derive a, a disturbing amount of pleasure from standing in Shaper Beam and Balls and just being like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stand here. This is this is fine. This is comfortable. It's it's one of the few pleasures left to us, Aurobots. 
<laughs> take it where you can get it, I suppose. Okay, now the Divine Blessing, and this is really cool. So, we used to run Divine Blessing on the Spark Carry setup, with Life Tap, of course, but GGG deleted that. So we have a new, better way to do it instead. All it costs is an Orobot Flask, um, and it, it, the Flask slot on the Orobot, um, and it costs a, a few points on the passive tree. Well, we were already going to uh, take... Re really only one point, yeah, so we really would otherwise one. take that smaller mana wheel. Yeah, we, we would already take one, two points for the Mastery for Clarity, so we take an extra point. We pick up the Dreamer Wheel, and this gives us 15% reduced mana cost of skills, right? That, combined with Inspiration, gives us a 34% reduced mana cost of skills. And we use a Flask. Uh, we should change this to not a Gold Flask, because it should probably be an Ellie Flask. Or even a bismuth flask for just... Uh, I mean, you know, it says on changes. the item, don't use a gold flask. <laughs> I guess it does say that, you know, there, there we go. Anyways, uh, we turn this flask on. So what, what we've done is there is a flask suffix, 25% reduced mana cost skills during flask effect. And you get this flask mod by unveiling cinder swallows from uh, Katarina, I believe they drop. And it's, uh, you, when unveiling a Cinder Swallow, there are six mods, and this is one of them, so you have a 50% chance to get this mod unlocked. Now, if you need this mod, we will be streaming the entirety of League Start, and I'm going to buy, we're going to buy Cinder Swallows until I've unlocked this mod. So if you need it for this setup, just stop by the stream, you know, say, hey, I need the mod, just message, or message me in-game, and I'll just craft it for you for free, or just whatever the cost of the uh, craft itself happens. You know, it's 20 to 25, and you want a max roll. You don't have to have a max roll, but you really want one. Uh, anyways, let's look at the cost on on Wrath here. So, you know, our our cost for Divine Blessing would be 432. Um, so with the reduced mana cost of skills and we roll an Enkindling Orb for increased effect, that turns the mana cost, it's, it's free now. You just, you just press the button. Now because we use a, because we're a Pathfinder and we're actually, you know, we use a, a Bismuth Flask that uses 15 charges here, this lasts in the calcs we can see that the duration is 16.5 seconds, right? So you you don't want quality on the flask that you use for this because you want the duration to be a little shorter. Uh, so basically all you need to do is recharge 15 flask charges between when the flask effect ends and when the duration on your Divine Blessing ends. So you know you have the time, but like the difference between those two times to recharge your flask charges. And you can basically maintain 100% uptime on an entire extra aura. So, as we've mentioned before, each version of the passive tree is accompanied by a corresponding skill and gem setup. So let's go to our 24, uh, level 24 setup here and talk about leveling a little bit. Right. Um, so with this build, leveling an Orobot, uh, obviously the pathing is a little bit uh, extreme, you know? You're going to be rushing to all of the aura clusters. Um, but you want to stay a real character for as long as possible, right? So that you can kill monsters by yourself, potentially run other zones while the carry is running a different one. Um, and if you look at the tree in front of you, you notice that we only pick up around 80 to 90% increased damage through our first 24 points. Uh, because of that, we're going to be using Orb of Storm's Stormblast Mine to carry us because that combination is absolutely busted. Um... Yeah, in addition, we obviously we pick up the Elemental Overload Keystone on the way to our first Aura Cluster, which is going to be the Sovereignty Wheel up there. Uh, you can see that if you look at the level 32 tree, and you can actually use the Compare function, uh, which has been added to POB recently, that allows you to compare two trees and see uh, the additions or potentially respecs between the first and the second tree. Yeah, this is a very nice tool that makes leveling using leveling trees feel a lot better. Um, so let's talk about our skills a little bit. Uh, you, you mentioned we use Orb of Storm, Storm Blast Mine in our uh, early setup. Uh, what about the other skills we use here? Um, it's just going to be a combination of Frostlink and Frostblink and Leap Slam for the mobility. Um, I've heard uh, I haven't personally tested it myself, but I've heard from a lot of sources that when you Typically, Flame, ba Flame Dash is a better mobility skill than Frost Blink, right? Uh, but I've heard many times that when you're using Leap Slam, Frost Blink feels better for some reason because there's that little cast time lockout uh, when you're using a movement skill plus uh, Flame Dash. So for that reason, we stick with uh, Frost Blink, which we pick up at level 4. Um, yeah, 
that's going to cover it for what our own character runs, and then additionally, the first supportive thing we do is we pick up a flame wall. Um, this isn't for the Orobot itself, this is going to be placed in front of the carry when it's casting, and this gives additional fire damage to the spark projectiles that pass through it. It also makes them look really cool, and that's the, the more important part. Sure does. It, it, it makes you feel good, you know? <laughs> uh as, uh, as I mentioned previously, the notes section is incredible. Uh, Seek is just the elemental god of formatting, and he's uh, made really nice leveling sections in both this and the carry POB. So if you're just having any questions about, you know, where do you pick up Stormblast Mine or Pierce Support, you buy it here for exactly one wisdom. You know, in Act 4, when you switch to the Orobot, you know, the Orobot setup, what are gems do you need? Here's exactly what they cost, and here's where you get them. So between the leveling tree, the item sets, and the gear sets, there should be basically everything you ever need to know to level this Orobot here, self-contained in the guide. Right. Yeah, I, I initially didn't <laughs> intend for the leveling section to be so massive and comprehensive, but uh, you know when I noticed that you could uh, change the color of words, I just got carried away, and uh, <laughs> yeah, now you can find the answer to just about any question concerning leveling in there um you know we can uh, go through the other other trees real quick because we'll probably want to especially look at level 44 because that's about when you do the great oro swap the uh, orobot swap right right so this is going to be around act four uh late act four um an important thing with this is to note that you shouldn't feel super pressured to do the orobot swap even if you're feeling weak as your own character uh just make sure you wait till you have the proper four link and the requisite amount of skill points to do the Orobot swap. Right. At this point, um, the uh, Spark Carry is so strong. Basically, once the Spark Carry gets the Lightning Mastery and Elemental o o elemental Overload, they can just shred everything in the game. So even if you're hardly contributing anything, which, you know, you you still are. You're still running, like, Wrath. You're still throwing Storm yeah. Blast Mines. You know, you there's no real pressure. You'll, you'll still be fine. Right. Just the, stick with your carry and the, wait the until carry you The carry does more than enough damage for two people. Um, but yeah, so you start out just running Wrath for yourself, right? Up to, like, level 32. With the Orobot swap, you're going to be putting in, uh, you're going to be putting in vitality and discipline at first, and your four link, the the only four link you need, um, really the only linked setup you need at all is going to be this four link. Um, this is going to be smite, faster attacks, generosity, and wrath. Um, we use a four link so that we can get generosity on both the smite and the wrath, of course. You can always just drop the faster attacks, but then you smite slower, and that feels bad. <laughs> uh, anyways, it should be pretty self-explanatory from here. Uh, level 69, you just continue being an Orobot, right? Yep. You, uh, oh, explain the... the explain the Cutlass real quick. It's just accuracy rating for Smite, that's all it is, right? It's a it's a base that gives us colors yeah, more, yeah. and it's just accuracy rating for Smite, you know? Right, it's yeah, fastest attack speed, accuracy rating. You can pick this up in late Act 4 and early Act 5 from a vendor, the weapons vendors. The tree... Uh... The tree's pretty uh, self-explanatory. You just grab all the aura nodes, pretty much. Uh, you take Ghost Dance because it's crazy good. You know, you uh, <laughs> you don't want to be doing feared, feeling a little squishy, and then find out you didn't take the Ghost Dance for, you know, 20 hours of gameplay. <laughs> uh, you especially don't want to be feeling a little squishy and realize you haven't taken Ghost Dance for over 100 hours of gameplay. By the time you already have hundreds of exalts in the characters. Was, was that, that I, far? I can confirm. Were we that far feeling. when you realized you weren't running it? Oh. <laughs> it's, we were I mean, we, so we, we didn't realize it until <clears throat> like 12 hours before we quit the league. It was on the very last day. <laughs> yeah, it, anyways. <laughs> we, we killed like 50 fears before I ever allocated that node. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strong node. It uh, gives you massive amounts of energy shield recovery. Right, like uh, with this thing... On the intermediate version, like the 500 Chaos version or whatever, you're going to be recovering like uh, nearly 2,000 energy shield, a little bit less with the Defiance Banner nerf, sadly. Um, but it's it's enough energy shield on hit, again, stacks up to three, where you can, uh, for example, take tank a Shaper Ball and your energy shield won't even budge because the Shaper Ball does less damage than Ghost Dance recovers. Like, especially with uh, the max res that you get and like spell suppression, it just combines really, really nicely. Oh, yeah. And then uh, now that we're looking at the taking a look at the 500 chaos investment version, uh, we should probably go over the notable features of it. The 500 chaos investment version is really where most of the mechanics uh, come online. 
and where you're going to be spending probably, I don't know about the majority of your time, but the most important time, right? This is where you're going to start. You really come into your own as an Orobot with all the purities, and you're going to really start pushing some juicy content. Uh, yes. Uh, before we get into this, we should probably actually cover um, like early and late mapping because this is going to be a very this is going to be kind of a pain point for a lot of people because you need currency to get your proper Orobot set up, but you need to play the game to get the currency. You know. Yeah. Um, so let's make sure to cover cover this. It's split into two sections: early mapping and late mapping. Why don't you explain what the difference is? Yeah. So uh, notably, uh, in early mapping, we run two unique items. And we play very lightly with the, you know, we lean very lightly into the auras. Um, we're not reserving any life. We're not trying to run purities or anything. Um, in early mapping, again, because you'll have a very small budget when you're just getting into maps, you're going to be running Sign of the Sin Eater. That is the most important item uh, between both of the builds after the carry has, you know, has a career reward and has a couple of their one chaos leveling items. You're gonna to want to rush this thing. Um, having there's no better feeling than having a sign of the sin eater, the level thirty smite in white maps. Like at that point, when you equip this thing, it basically gives you enough damage to do red maps. You're just running around killing everything in white maps. Yeah, at that um, point, because your your base damage is a little lower. This is basically a hundred percent more damage, pretty much. Maybe not quite, yeah. but it's close. It's it's uh, roughly equivalent to getting two extra links by investing in a tabula on the carry. Um, yep, and then we uh, we don't invest in any reservation gear, right? But uh, the Vol Caress rework made it so that they add plus five to the level of socketed Vol gems. Of course, uh, there are a bunch of Vol, or Vol auras in the game, right? And the plus five to level of socketed Vol gems does apply to the normal component, the you know permanently reserved aura of those Vol skills. So for that reason, if these gloves are uh, you know, remotely cheap, anywhere below 10 chaos, it's going to be a pretty high priority item. You're going to want to put uh, Vol Discipline, Vol Haste, and Vol Grace in these things. You don't actually run Haste in this version, but just being able to right. spam out Vol Haste for the movement speed and attack speed makes mapping feel really nice. Yep. Discipline and Haste are the permanent auras that you run. Uh, and then the jewels, just the quest jewels and survival instincts, yep. right? Uh, and then let's go over late mapping. Because this exactly. is what you this is what you work on once your carry has like a tabula, a few one C rares, and you know, their basic cheap non crit setup. Right. So what's um, the difference between late mapping and the five hundred C investment version? All right. So the the main difference, looking at the auras first, is that the late mapping version does not run the three purities. Um, it simply doesn't have. It would have to sacrifice too much to run those. It just doesn't have the reservation to efficiently run them. Um, but that doesn't mean it is weak by any means. It's running uh, pretty much every other aura you would want. It's running. Uh, I think two damage auras. It's running a Matua Tapuna. Is it two or is it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's two. two at this point. In a Victorios, which buffs them quite right. a bit additionally. Um, yeah. This is where we throw on a bunch of... We, we lean a little bit into reservation, right? So we have the Alpha's Howl, the Victorios. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it as far as reservation goes. We also use one uh, small cluster jewel for reservation. You don't need any rolls on it. Uh, we never use any reservation efficiency all the way up until, like, you know, 3,000 Chaos version. Uh, you just want to roll a little bit of ES on there. It takes, like, you know, 10, 20 alts to get that. Yeah, it's pretty easy, you know, these are... Getting getting the energy shield on these cluster jewels is also really nice. Like, you can see, uh, this one node gives us 63 energy shield from having the 16 flat on it. And that's not even a T1 roll, that's only T2, right? Like, compared to a small node, it gives us 76. So by taking the flat energy shield, it's basically almost as good as just taking ES nodes on the tree. And you also get the reservation out of it. It's, uh, it's a lot more cost-efficient than trying to roll effects and using fewer. You know, you just... Uh, yeah. Uh, right. So going back to the items real quick, uh, because we are not trying to run the purities, we don't need a Prism Guardian yet. On top of that, Prism Guardian uh, could potentially be the most expensive item that this build has to buy for the 500C version. Um, I think upper end, it might be around 200 Chaos. I think it'll likely be a good bit lower than that. Um, but regardless, you don't want to put that in the late mapping version. Right, right, not quite in the budget. If you want so an intermediate version, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
we just run the uh, Matua Tupuna. We feel bad that it's not the old faded version of the shield, but it gives us just as much aura effect as it used to. That's true. Your yep. energy shield number is lower, but that's just the main consequence of the nerfs this league. And then, uh, real quick, to fill out our ES pool, we run uh, some dirt cheap uh, Sintrek boots and Beta Breath. Sintrek is... Well, Beta Breath is the truly dirt cheap one of these two. It's, a you know of course, a one alk unique. Sintrek are just the classic Orobot boots. They have a massive amount of evasion and energy shield. Um, and given that we take the energy shield evasion mastery on the tree, plus one to ES per eight evasion on boots, uh, that turns into about 80 or 90 additional flat energy shield just from the Sintrex. So with that, you're you're paying, you know, 5 to 10 chaos for boots that give you 270, 280 energy shield with 30 movement speed. I uh, really can't beat them as far as cost goes. And for and finally, the amulet, we don't have Champion of the Cause anointed, right? Because that's too expensive to get early. Right, that would be like, uh, <laughs> be about as expensive as the, the rest of this build put together. Uh, but we do run a Jinx Juju still. This is going to be one of the last items you buy uh, because it just gives aura effect. I'd recommend saving up for a 10% uh, aura effect roll. It rolls from 6 to 10. It's by no means a crucial item, so you're going to be fine You know, waiting to have a little bit more currency to get a 10. That saves you from having to buy another one of these later. Um, for the anoint on that, we allocate Arcane Potency. It's a relatively cheap uh, anoint that gives a very... You know, it's it's 20% increased maximum energy shield. That's huge. This is overall the most cost-effective anoint that we can have on this version. Yep, only Verdant and Crimson Oil is very cheap to get. Yep. And then for the rest of the jewelry, it's just uh, some rare rings. We just use these to fill out our... Uh, not even really focus on filling out our ES pool at this point. We just throw these on to get, uh, you know, fix our strength and then get a little bit of chaos res. Um, let's talk about the Ellie Flask a little bit too, right? right. Because we're not so, running purities, we still have to cap our resistances. Exactly. Um, and without purities, it's pretty hard to do, given that we are running, you know, not, we're we're running two rare items on the entire build, right? We have to run all these uniques without any res on them, uh, and because of that, we run triple elemental flasks, coruscating elixir being the uh, fire res flask, right? So these things, with your Pathfinder and all your other flasks sustain, are going to have like 85% uptime or something. That is with uh, increased effect on it, no less. Um, if you roll duration or even probably just no prefix, you have true 100% uptime. But 85% is totally fine. And uh, if we this... run these oh, go ahead, sorry. to... Yeah. They, they basically act as purities in two ways. Obviously, they give you a huge amount of Ellie res, and then they also give you uh, less cold damage taken and less of each of the elemental damage to, damage is taken. Now, while, while, they, while the carry doesn't get to enjoy those benefits, uh, for the purposes of the Orobot, these are basically uh, mini purities. And it also, because we put so much of this early investment in the Orobot, like the carry's running around with uh, tabula and floor rares, you know, making the Orobot tankier lets the Orobot very comfortably use Soul Link, which, uh, you know, is, is why we invest so heavily in the Orobot. It's just so much more efficient. Um, if this seems uh, a little uneasy, if this makes you a little uneasy, like running the reduced duration, um, not only can you just drop that and have true 100% uptime, you can also just pick up an elemental resist during flask effect suffix um, to get you know the extra to make sure you easily cap, cap your early res here. Yeah. So now let's transition into our first true Orobot setup, the 500 Chaos Investment version. Now what are the main differences between this and the late mapping version? All right, this is where we uh, first, you know, transform into what I would say a true classic Orobot, running all of the defensive auras, some offensive auras, and most importantly now the triple purities to give us huge amounts of maximum Ellie res. Um, Obviously, to to allow this, uh, to allow us to fit in so much more reservation, we're going to be using the Prism Guardian now. Uh, this, instead of having to use Arrogance support, which allows you to reserve uh, auras on your life, uh, which typically has a 200% um, reservation multiplier, we simply use Prism Guardian, which not only has allows you to reserve them on your life with no reservation multiplier. It also comes with socketed gems have 30% increased reservation efficiency. Um, with only the life reservation efficiency mastery on the tree, 
uh, which is getting nerfed next patch. We've accounted for that in the config, which we should probably mention real quick. Um, given yes. that we are we were testing all of this in PUB uh, after the patch notes, but before PUB was updated, um, we've included a couple config modifiers that uh, should entirely account for the nerfs that occurred in, uh, in 3.19. Yeah, as soon as PUB updates, you know, you, you can always check this to make sure they're not here, but if once PUB updates, we'll re-upload the, uh, you know, recopy the PUBs to remove these now that it's taken account yep. with PUB itself. Oh, right. So, a point being, without any additional investment in life reservation efficiency, we can stick a 50% and two 35% auras in the Prism Guardian, um, and just, you know, have even a little bit of life left over there. Uh, notably, Prism Guardian also comes with a plus two to socketed gems in it, and when you get, uh, when you get a purity to level 23, uh, so here that's going to come from a level 21 gem and plus two from the Prism Guardian, uh, it hits a breakpoint where it grants an additional max res that gets multiplied by your aura effect. Uh, so putting these in the 500c investment version, uh, getting a level 21 gem in your Prism Guardian is going to get you two more, two additional maximum LE res of that element. And we can only afford to have two of our purities in this for the max res. Uh, one of them really should be fire. Like the gems are very thought out. Like Seek put so much thought into just even like which which items like have certain socket colors to make it easy to get those you know skill gems as possible because so much of the Orobot build is unique items and the rares you know like you really want specific base types for that. Um, so just put a lot of pay attention to like where these things are socketed because it's uh, it'll be make it much easier for you to set up this version on your own. Right, and also make sure to uh, pay attention to the links themselves. Um, again, with generosity, uh, with you know life reservation, all that um, incorporated in the build, you got to be very careful not to accidentally link something uh, to something it shouldn't be linked to, or accidentally socket something in the wrong item. Oh, before we go on, uh, well, let's uh, let's talk about the flask enchant because this is something a lot of people get, could get wrong really easily. You absolutely have to have the reuse at the end of this flask effect uh, enchant from, but it's instilling orbs, right? Uh, before yes. using Coruscating Elixir, because otherwise you, you're just going to have to manually press it. That is miserable. Just get this enchant, and then you press it once at the start of every zone and don't have to worry about it again. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, but anyways, talking about which purities go, uh, Purity of Fire especially, uh, you can prioritize this because it makes your carry take less damage from Righteous Fire, so getting the extra couple max res is just really nice. Um, yeah. I guess one thing to mention with this is that uh, even though we've included a bunch more gems now, we still have all of these sockets to fit in uh, Stormblast Mine, Smite, Flame Dash, Soul Link, and in addition, we pick up a Moonstone Ring to use a Rejuvenation Totem. After it, this thing got buffed by the patch notes, um, it's it's more powerful than Vitality by a good bit now. Um, so you're gonna, you know, if you're in a Feared, if you're in an Uber Elder, if you're in a Cortex especially, um, or a Simulacrum, this thing provides huge value. Uh, you just slap it down. Notably, the quality on it, the default quality. Now, in this build, we actually haven't qualityed any of our gems except the Rejuvenation Totem, and that's because it gives such a huge difference in the aura effect, or the the area of effect of your aura. You can slap it down on the other side of a boss arena, and it will be giving you life regen while you're on the other side of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, once you're once you're at high investment levels, you know, you'll want the extra effect. This will this is nerfed at twenty percent increased effect in the patch, but it's still good. But you know, early yeah. on the the Area of effect is just really, really nice quality of life. Um, we put this in an unset ring, not a moonstone ring. Um, you know, it's <laughs> just, just just to be clear, you know, yeah, you you need an unset ring to fit the extra gym in. Uh, I mean, I guess I should have gone over the rares, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, let's go over the... We can, you can just start, like, I'll just cut the yeah. silence out. And to go over the rares now real quick, um, they're all pretty similar in the idea. Uh, because we take the mastery on the tree by the instinct wheel, uh, we have a spell suppression mastery for chance to suppress spell damage. If your 
uh, helmet, gloves, and boots have evasion on them. Because of that, uh, we're going to be crafting instead of on a pure ES base, we're going to be using evasion energy shield for all these. So the helmet is just going to be uh, a Essence of Woe crafted um, evasion ES helmet. We use the lowest tier of Essence of Woe just to get a little bit of mana reservation. You spam that till you get your spell suppress and uh, craft the increased evasion energy shield on it, which is a pretty pretty powerful crafted modifier. Uh, yeah, no, the the hybrid the hybrid craft prefix is really nice. All right, uh, gloves exactly the same thing here. Um, instead of uh, because we can't get you know reservation efficiency with a loathing on the gloves, we're gonna be spamming an essence of woe for the energy shield prefix. Um, aside from that, it's exactly the same idea. Now on the rings, um, we run two rings. They're pretty much just here to fix our chaos res because we can't really get chaos res anywhere else. Um, now, chaos damage isn't, you know, any more dangerous to us than a normal character, um, but we still want to cap them, and, and using amethyst rings is a great way to uh, to do that. Yeah, you can just um, buy a white amethyst ring, put four quality, or like uh, resistance qual modifiers on it, and then use either essences, like essences of woe until you hit chaos res, or you can um, uh, roll with fossils with the chaos, I think, aberrant. Uh, and yeah, that's dense right. fossils, you know, to hit it, something like this too. Uh, you can also just buy an item like this off of trade, and um, you know, there's a there's a lot of availability for rings on trade. You know, you don't have to have perfectly capped capped uh, chaos res. So you know, there's yeah. a yeah, you know, there's a lot of options here. A pretty same thing for the unset ring. I think you used uh, you want strength and energy shield with an open suffix. Uh, you should be able to buy this off trade really easily. You know, you should be able to get yeah. much better than this actually. <laughs> this is a, this yeah, is a we try to make these, item. these items as ethical as possible. Uh, you do have to invest in the belt a little bit because crystal belts are insane. So you just buy a you know buy a crystal belt, quality it, then you use the I think spite is the intelligence essence. Yep, spite essence to get your intelligence suffix. You spam Be it to get a decent tier of energy shield, uh, which also gets you know benefits from the defense catalyst, and then you're gonna craft good old elemental and chaos res which is what we craft on all of our jewelry and pretty much every investment yeah chaos and res is so nice level. like we get so much defense from like fizz hits with like armor uh so you know we we like being tanky so you know we always cap chaos res um yeah. and that's about it uh veteran defender i will put a or we'll, we'll put a search in the better trading folder so you can just search for this I don't remember how we decided to craft this. It was really easy, though. Very, very cheap to make. Um, alternatively, if you don't want Veteran Defender or you can't get it, uh, you can just use a... Where is it? Yes, no notables. Definitely yes, no it. notables. Large. That just gives you flat energy shield, and that'll be about as good. You know, now that we it, have... It's even better on the energy shield front, actually, but, uh, you know, it doesn't come with 15 all attributes and... Uh... Yeah, you get a little more energy shield, you use a little bit of strength and dex, you know. Yeah. And that's uh, about it. Uh, let's talk yeah. about the higher investment level now, and that should be about it for our different versions of the Yorobot here. Uh, so what are the main differences right. between the 500 Chaos and the 3000 Chaos version? So with the 3000 Chaos version, um, the, the main difference is going to be you're going to be running an additional... Uh, is it one or two additional... Damage ores. Uh, I, I think it's one additional in damage ore in your body yeah. armor, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rats electric yeah, hatred. Rats electric first links up there. Hatred plus hatred. Yeah. Um, haste on divine blessing still. Yeah. Right. So you get an additional fifty percent damage aura, and notably, you get a huge amount of aura effect. Um, the five hundred chaos investment version had around, uh, what I think it has exactly two hundred percent aura effect. This version is going to have uh, 200, over 240% aura effect, or perhaps exactly 240% aura effect, uh, which means your purities, what, uh, you know, level 23 purities, are going to be giving you and your carry 87% maximum Ellie res, which is a huge uh, boost to survivability compared to the 83% that we had before. Uh, we get that aura effect by using a militant faith timeless jewel. Now we used to. Now we, you need the mod for one percent increased effect of non-curse auras per ten devotion, and the defenses from equipped shield used to be really good. Uh, but now that our shield is kind of ass, we get a lot less from getting that that uh, 
second affix, so really just get the increased effect of auras, and that will be in the trade folder as well, of course, so along with everything else. So we take a lot of, lot of nodes in this area and use an unnatural instinct, since, you know, all of these nodes get devotion on them, and unnatural instinct gives us 80 devotion, right, because it uh, gives us the bonuses of all these skills, so that's yep. basically just 8% aura effect. Uh, yeah, notably those skills are also nice to have. It gives you a bunch of movement speed and skill effect duration for your divine blessing, and your uh, your divine blessing and your smite. Yeah, a little bit off the uh, the note here. Uh, yeah, the rest of the passive tree is actually quite similar. Um, I believe in this version we ended up running twenty five percent increased effect. Uh, the notables there with uh, with eight intelligence that is a pretty easy combination to get especially with this budget um as the eight int is you know a suffix um so by just doing alt dog regal you can yeah you can pretty pretty easily roll into that combination uh, we drop mines at this point as well because at this version yeah. with our carry you have enough damage that just you know we're we're earning our right to drop buttons to not have as many <laughs> great way to put it we we also simply run out of sockets here. So it's true. It, you know, it feels more quite good to to replace a uh, two two you know two sockets, which is mines. It's also a button with cast time and four passive points with a permanent juiced fifty percent aura. It's true. It's true. Uh, there's so many ways you can actually improve before we go into the rest of it, like getting uh, an extra enlightened level or something. You know, getting ES swells would be you know obviously a lot better than effect. Um, there's, like with the higher investment carry POB, there are so, so, so many ways you can put more into this character. Um, but we're just covering, like, the point where it's most cost-efficient to do all the things we've done, and you can just pretty much do the entire game with no issues whatsoever at this, at this investment level. So, so more investment is just for, like, the fun of it, or getting your numbers bigger, you know, the true end game of Path of Exile. <laughs> Uh, let's look over our helmet first. We we pick up a synthesized aura effect implicit helmet. Uh, yeah. The this is going to be a. I mean, the this is a pretty crazy modifier. Uh, you remember all the work and expense we <laughs> we had to go through to get the aura effect off the timeless jewel in the center, um, and simply with a with an implicit, we get almost as much from the helmet. Yeah, it's um, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. You just know, do... similar to the last one, we're going to be crafting this thing with Reservation, uh, the Loathing Essence for Reservation. You spam it so you get, like, a little bit of Energy Shield, some Intelligence, or Spell Suppress. Uh, you don't actually need Spell Suppress, which is quite nice not to have to worry about that, and then you craft your Energy Shield. You know, we're not quite Spell Suppress capped, but on the actual buffed tree, we will be, you know, because we take more of the Spell Suppress nodes in this version. Right, th this is actually, uh, should be effectively 100% Spell Suppress capped. Uh we also get plus two AOE murder mitts, and the way we craft these is by rolling veiled chaos orbs. The plus two socketed AOE gems is a veiled prefix, and so, you know, we just spam these until we get socketed AOE gems, and then you can Eldritch craft them, or just do it a few times until you get other good affixes. You craft evasion and energy shield, and then you make sure to have spell suppress on your implicit. Now, these are very ethical, you can get much better gloves than these, and there's many other ways to get plus two socketed AOE gems. You know, you can use a Corrupted Implicit. You know, there's there's so many different versions of ways to get plus two AoE. This is just a very cheap, very reliable, consistent way that doesn't rely on the finical, finicky pricing of Corrupted items to get your plus two for the like your other purities and auras. And just as uh, Halo touched on real quick, you can get plus two Corruption on your Sin Trek. It's probably the easiest way on top of this. You could get plus two uh, Crafted on the Helmet in the same way. Um... Well, no. No, you need the mineral. We're going to have to cut that out. You can definitely not do that. <laughs> <If> you... <laughs> what can you do? Uh, anyway. Victarios, you can get like plus two there. I mean, you do want a max roll, so that'll be a little harder. You know, probably won't exist, but yeah, somebody will get one, you know. <laughs> not us, but somebody will get one and link it to us. Uh, oh, let's talk about this ring. This is really cool. We should, we, we're yeah. expecting to be able to get this on like early carry versions, even better versions, because these should be pretty cheap. Uh, basically, just get ES and intelligence on a ring. Um, and there you go. You're, uh, the, the, the Calandra League mechanic lets you, like, double or triple the values of modifiers. So you get, like, you roll a ring with intelligence and energy shield, 
and then you like annul until you have a third affix that you don't really care about and then you just throw this at the cranglinator and uh you know you should be able to get this pretty easily or just snipe something like an off trade you know and this is actually on the low end of what I think is possible, so you know, watch for watch for these. Yeah, you you can get some pretty crazy rings with the new league mechanic. A belt. Uh, yep, belt. We're just using an upgrade to the old version. It's a Crusader ES belt. Uh, you just craft this. I I mean, it's it's got two mods on it. They're both ES. You craft it using dense fossils. It's about I think seventy dense fossils to hit both increased ES and uh, a very high tier max ES. And then you can uh, craft on the suffix. You have a couple options. You can actually craft, you know, good old elemental and chaos. You can craft strength and int if you happen to need the strength. Uh, there's also an interesting mod you can craft if you want to sit in shaper beams. You can craft uh, increased, or not increased, you can craft regenerate, I think, 120 energy shield while a rare or unique enemy, enemy is nearby. Let me, uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, 150, rather. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nice. Right. All right, what do we got left? I guess it's mostly on to the frequently asked questions, because we're pretty much done with everything. I, I think we just about covered it all. All right, so let's start with the first question. Can you play this aura bot with X carry build? Like, And to answer that, yes. Yes, you can. Uh, this aura bot is incredibly powerful. Um... Mainly, most of the, almost all of the auras you run are defensive, which are, you know, going to be universally desired by any carry build, right? Um, and, yeah, you, you can play it with an attack build, you can play it with a spell build, you can play it with a fizz conversion build. The main thing that you're going to be changing to adapt between your builds is you're going to want to adapt your uh, the few offensive auras you run to your carry. Um, for instance, for an attack build, you know, you might run prioritize Wrath and Anger, uh, fizz conversion build, you're going to want to prioritize getting a hatred early on for the double dipping. Um, remember that you can always, to figure out which auras you want to run for your carry, you can always go into the carry's PUB and uh, just, you know, test out some auras there. And even though we have a lot more aura effect, uh, pretty much the, the auras that are good at low aura effect in the carry PUB are going to be the same ones you're going to want to run on the aura bot to benefit that carry. Uh, now, we do recommend you play our Spark Inquisitor Duo setup because it is incredibly optimized and a really cool build and uh, has been sort of built from the ground up to be played with this character. Uh, but yeah, like Seek said, you can kind of do it with anything. It just won't be quite as it ludicrously won't be powerful. It as utterly broken, yeah. Uh, what about Animate Guardian? Well, Animate Guardian is actually an excellent way to delete multiple exalts, or I suppose I should say divine orbs now, of currency. Um, unfortunately, uh, especially given the content that you're going to be doing on this build, uh, animate guardian when you're not, you know, when you're not a minion build or otherwise something like a, uh, if you don't have something like a mana, a giga mana guardian in your party to keep it alive, um, this thing is not going to survive even remotely juicy content. To tell a sad tale, last league we, uh, we thought we wanted to run this. We dumped about three exalts into it, gave it, it a kingmaker. It was closer to five or six, I think. Is it really? Yeah, that's, it was, that's it was right. at least the, five. The helmet was really expensive, yeah. Yeah, so we had... Anyway, the, uh, we had the... Yeah. Oh, I was just keeping going on because it's a fun story. You know, we, we, were mean, using, know. we were using the the quote immortal animate guardian setup with like Mask of the Stitch Demon. We were using Garb of the Ephemeral. We had Kingmaker. We had like all the other items that people recommend to have like an immortal... Um, animate guardian, and we spec the grave intentions node as well as the mastery to give him like um, extra yeah. elemental resist. I think it was, right. and that it entire was on wheel the which gives them life on the orbot. And keep in mind, right? It, we we did all of that, and then we're an orbot giving it huge amounts of armor. You know of you know the vitality buff, giving it just instantly overcapping its Ellie resists. And uh, after all that effort and all that expense, we walked into an uber cortex and it died within a it died to blue mobs in <laughs> it an was uber so cortex. bad <laughs> but you know now we know you know maybe there's yeah, some now way we to know and we're, we're telling you so that you don't have to share the same fate we've we've learned many <laughs> of these lessons the hard already go through that just don't worry don't run one
It's also a gym socket and passive three points, and we don't like giving up any of those things, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, what about flask uptime? Is Droughtbringer a concern with running Coruscating Elixir? Uh, not remotely. So the way Droughtbringer works is the, uh, the Arch Nemesis rare modifier, Droughtbringer, when the rare rare monster walks near you, it has an aura, a uh, pretty small range on it. This aura both prevents you from gaining any flask charges in its effect, and it also gradually drains your flask charges away, down to zero. The key word here is gradually. Um, when you're standing next to this thing, if you are standing still and not killing it, which it will be killed instantly, probably from off screen. Um, it still takes around 15 seconds for this thing to drain your coruscating elixir down to zero. Uh, and the reason I know that number is because we tested it specifically in a map. If we didn't do that, I would have ha I would have no idea what this thing does because um, after over 100 hours of playing last league with the Covenant Aurobot, with the Arch Nemesis monsters everywhere. I uh, Not only did I never die from it, I didn't even notice the Droughtbringer aura uh, at any point in the league. Yep, yeah, pretty much a non-factor. I'd be surprised if like you die like once to it ever in an entire league, you know. Yeah. Uh, and how do you get to 90% max Ellie res? Uh, well, that's the secret. You don't. Uh... So on this version of the build, even on the twenty uh, or the three thousand chaos investment version, um, it's quite easy—not quite easy—but uh, we can manageably get to eighty-seven percent all res. Um, now, getting an additional twenty percent aura effect from this point is very, very hard, um, and it's pretty much going to require an entire character rebuild with you swapping over to an elevated redeemer chest with uh, elevated increased aura effect of your skills. You're going to need to change, you're going to need to get more enlightens. You're going to need to change up your cluster jewel setup. And overall, um, it's a lot of hassle. And most importantly, it's a lot of currency, even on 20 exalts. You could probably get that done on 20 exalts, but there are, it's going to leave you wanting in terms of spell suppress, in terms of running more offensive auras, in terms of your energy shield pool. Um, so yeah, with this version of the build, we simply get 87% all res, and then we stick with it. Um, the carry has a few options to run. I think both the carry and the Aurobot have a couple options, though, to get from 87% max res to 90% max res. Uh, you can use an impossible escape around imbalance guard to allocate soul of steel and prismatic skin. This is going to cost you a gem socket and two passive points. Um, the carry also can get 5% uh, double damage for another passive point if they use that. Um, yeah. There's we also, I mean, there are a lot of options. There's like Eldritch Implicits. There is a, uh, the carry can run a Brass Dome or Sublime Vision. There's so many options for the carry. Uh, short answer is it's just not cost effective. And later, for later investment, we're going to do it by running Aegis Aurora and Melding. Uh, probably with Mage Bloods too, uh, and that's going to be our Giga Investment version. So, uh, yeah, there's 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 lots of options, but it's just none of them are particularly cost efficient. You're pretty immortal on this setup already. And that's about it. We've covered pretty much everything. Uh, if you'd like to join our Discord server, there will be a link in the description below. It's a very good place to ask questions, very helpful, friendly community growing there. And if you're looking for somebody to play with, there is a Looking for Group channel that explains how you can find other people to play with uh, for a duo start. We will also be streaming all through Lake of Calandra's League start, so if you want to check us out, there's a link in the description below. And if you want to give us some money, there's a link for that too. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have an excellent Lake of Calandra League start. And uh, yeah, catch you later.